thing. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? Yeah. Oh, I feel it. I believe you. Would you stand to your feet, please? You can shake someone's hand if you haven't already. You know this song. It's called In My Father's House. Come and go with me to my father's house. of the Lord, and there are many reasons to come into the house of the Lord, but the number one reason is to worship him, and this song is called, We Have Come Into This House, it's song 25 in your praise book, sing it with us. We have come into his house, gathered in his name to worship him. Lord, 
Ladies got it. But it's for the Lord. For the Lord. All right. We're in our groups. We're in our groups. Good, good, good. John chapter one. In the beginning was the one who is called the Word. The Word was with God and was truly God. From the very beginning, the Word was with God. And with this Word, God created all things. Nothing was made without the Word. Everything that was created received its life from Him, and His life gave light to everyone. The light keeps shining in the dark, and darkness has never put it out. God sent a man named John who came to tell about the light and to lead all people to have faith. And John wasn't this light, he came only to tell about the light. The true light that shines on everyone was coming into the world. The, world, the, the word was in the world, but no one knew him. Though God had made the world with this word, with his word. He came into his own world, but his own nation did not welcome him. Yet some people accepted him and put their faith in him. So he gave them the right to be the children of God. They were not God's children by nature or because of any human desires. God himself was the one who made him his children. The word became a human being and lived here with us. We saw his true glory, the glory of the only son of the father. From him, the complete gifts of undeserved grace and truth have come down to us. The song that we're about to share this morning is an original, uh, and it is entitled, He is the Light. It's taken from the scripture that I just read for you.
choir. He is the way. Dismissed to follow me and Miss Darla upstairs. Thank you, Miss Anna. Thank you, thank you. I'll give them a minute to do what they're doing. Again, good afternoon, Solid Rock. Good afternoon. good afternoon. And good afternoon, those joining us by way of Facebook and afterwards through YouTube and however else you might be joining us now or later. Yeah. Welcome. I appreciate you joining us. Um, the verse of the month, and it's taken from the same place that the song was inspired. This is John 1 5. It says, The light shines in darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. If you need some hope, I want you to know there's hope available to you today. And it's through the way, the truth, and the life, and that's Jesus Christ. Just a couple of announcements. Um, if you are interested in joining our medical missions team, please see Yvonne Beverly. I believe March is when a lot of that's yeah, going down. Coming up in March. In March. Okay. Yvonne, if you would wave your hand for those. See her. See her. And February birthdays. Y'all gotta stop having all these babies in February. On um, the first was Joey Jarena, Sean Brana. Y'all, I'll talk through you clapping. I ain't gonna stop you. It's fine. Um, the sixth today is Rhonda Dodson. The seventh is Lila Hayes. On the ninth is Paris Boley and Caitlin. I apologize, Caitlin Ferguson Cash in here. I'm going off of old information I had. The 11th is Tabitha Knuckles and Chloe Hayes. The 14th is Alex Richardson. Always on Valentine's Day. That's how I can remember his name. That's, that's so cool. He's, that's good. He's a sweetheart. There you go. On the 15th, Susanna Bethea and David Glass. On the 16th, Sheriff E.W. Vyer is his birthday. And Sydney Wade, Pastor Sydney Wade. Um, the 19th is James Payne. The 22nd, Whitney McDowell. The 24th, Carol Burks. The 25th, Alexandria Jarena. 
The 26th, um, Tiona Payne and Derek Payne, and the 27th is Nathan Woods. And Kenny and Lisa Witt um, celebrate a wedding anniversary on the 14th of this month as well. The last announcement I have is David Musselman will be coming to minister for us on the 21st of this month. That's two weeks from today, I think. Yes, two weeks. Um, he's, a, he's a minister that uh, shares through word and through song. There's some interesting piano music he's going to share for us, and it should be really great. I'm looking forward to it. Super nice attitude on the phone. When I had to flip-flop back and forth, like, okay, we're having church this Sunday. Okay, we're not having church this Sunday. Okay, we are, okay we're not. And he's like, just tell me when you want me to come. I'm like, all right, the 21st it is. So he was, I appreciate his attitude with that. At this time, if I could have a volunteer or two to help with our afternoon tithes and offerings, please. No 
storm can shake my inmost calm while to that refuge clinging since Christ is Lord of heaven and earth how can I keep Thank you, Chair. At this time, it is my privilege to introduce Miss Leela McDowell with a song she is going to share. I'll be over there in a moment. Um, whichever your heart desires. I'll use this bad mic here. It keeps pointing up to the ceiling, which is the right place to point, but it's not good for a mic. <laughs> and um, Candy's so um, very modest. The song that the choir sang this morning is an original song, for sure. Inspired by scripture, praise God, all of our music should be inspired by scripture. But Candy wrote it. So y'all give Candy a hand. That's a wonderful song. I, I hum it all the time now. So praise the Lord for that. But the song that I'm going to sing today also is inspired by scripture. The book of Daniel tells us about the three Hebrew children who had been accused of not worshiping the king. Oh, well. <laughs> but they were going to be thrown into the fiery furnace. And the king made a daring, bold, Satan-like statement and said, and what God's going to keep you from the fiery furnace? So they answered him and they said, our God is able yes. to get us out of the, to keep us out of the fiery furnace. But if not, we still worship him and not you. Amen. And that's what this song is about. It's called Even If. They say sometimes you win some, sometimes.
Yes, I know you're able. I know you can. At this time, if I could have it's Mike, Duff. Yeah. Mike Duff for our scripture reading. Thank you. Good morning, church. Good afternoon, church. I'm sorry. Where am I? <laughs> As we get through the week and get down here to the weekend, we... I don't know about y'all, but I fight and fuss with the people on Facebook all week long, and I need to come in here and get rejuvenated very quickly. <laughs> but with God, all things are possible. That's, way I, that's what I stand on all the time. Things uh, don't seem to be going as great as they could be, but God still has a plan, and I know that his plan, and we know how this all ends. You know, we're going to win this thing no matter what. It's coming down to that very quickly. But uh, remember to stand fast in his word. Remember to be there in his word. Because these are very important days coming up. All of them. Every one of them. And as we can see this world turning away from God, and it's happening all the time. I, I got people on Facebook all the time. In fact, I told... Some people on Facebook the other night, well, you know, you can believe in whatever you want to, but Jesus is coming back, and he's coming back very soon. And he's not going to be happy with what you are trying to broadcast here. You know, I, I just take it like this, folks. If you can't see the evil that's in this world right now, then you must be lost because it's right in front of your eyes. I mean, all you have to do is turn on the TV or pick up a newspaper and everything that this book says is going to happen is happening right now. Yes, it is. It's not waiting for down the road. It is happening right, right now. Yep. And I'm telling you, it's picking up fast, too. It's, it's just going to roll. And we have people in the White House now that are going to make this roll. Y'all know what they stand for. You know that. I argued the other night for an hour with these people online. And they're trying to tell me, in fact, they're telling me that Jesus is not coming back and that I'm an idiot. And I said, well, that's fine. You believe that all you want to. I said, but when he comes back, baby killers and same-sex marriage is not going to rule the day. No, it's not. I can assure you of that. That's not going to happen. And they're telling me that God loves them. I said, yes, he does. He most certainly loves you. He wants everyone to come on this side and, and, and be part of the heavenly host and be part of everything that's going to happen. But you're not going believing in that. And they will not come off of that, folks. I'm telling you, this abortion thing right here has so many of them lined up with the pits of hell. I mean, it's, it's unnumbered. It's just you can't even number them all. And it's sad. It's very sad. 
But the book said that's what's going to happen. There is going to be a great falling away. And I'm telling you, folks, we ain't waiting for a falling away. That whole side right there has fallen away. Now, you think about that. That's half of this nation right here that's lost and deceived. You think about that. Half of this country is lost and deceived. And I'm telling you, they're not going to experience what the whole it has for them. Not because I say so, but because this says so. And I try to tell them the urgency. I try to tell them that the timeline is coming down to bam, boy, we're going to be off this earth pretty soon. And if you're not part of that group, you're going to be left down here. And this is not going to be earth anymore. This is going to be hell down here on earth. Because it's almost there now, if you think about it. Can you imagine what this world is going to look like when the church is gone? I can't imagine being in the middle of that. I've talked to so many people about that. And I try to tell them that it's all about time now. Because time is running short. You don't have much time. I mean, we could be out of here, bam, right now. He could call us out of this church right now today. We're waiting for nothing else to happen. Everything that the Bible says has to happen when he comes has happened. We're not waiting for one more thing. It's over with right now. He could come snatch us right now off this earth. I hope he does. I'm ready to go. But I know why he's waiting. Because I got family members. You have family members. We all have friends and people everywhere that need to hear this. They need to hear this message that, hey, you don't have a lot of time. I, I can't tell you how many people tell me, oh, I'm, I'm going to get right. I, and, Mike, I'm going to get right next week, and I'm going I'm to quit doing drugs. I'm going to quit drinking. I'm going to quit doing all this, and I'm going to come to church. I said, well, you don't need church then. If you're going to do that, you're going to save yourself. I said, Jesus said to come as you are. He didn't say to get all, all pretty and beautified up and get all cleaned up and come to church. He can't help that. He came to help the sick. Not the ones that are well. So don't wait for that. People tell you that. People tell you, oh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get right. I, I'm going to get right and I'm coming back to you. You need to be that way so to come back to church so he can help you get saved right here. I can't deliver you. Nikki can't deliver you. Dave can't deliver you. Only God himself can deliver you. We're just vessels of people that, that try to spread the word. That's all we can do. I know a lot of people that try to spread the word and get you salvation all at one time. They're going to beat you right into heaven. There's a lot of people that try to do that. that. That doesn't work. I've tried to do that too. I've tried to be forceful with it. Mm -mm, that ain't going to work. Only thing we can do, folks, is plant that seed. That's all we can do. We're not, that's not our job to put them in heaven. That's God's job to put you in heaven. Our job is to plant that seed and just let it go with that. God will take care of it from there. So remember that. Remember your, remember your family people. I have family people too that, that need to be here. We all need to be here. Whether it's Saturday, Sunday, Monday, I don't care when it is. Anytime, anytime God's house is open, we should be here. So if everyone will rise, I'm going to be reading from Hebrews today. Chapter 3, 5 through 19. And this is about, this is about the wicked and the good kind of together, but it, it kind of gives a story of what's going to happen. I'm reading from the book. You can read right along. Chapter 3, 5. Moses was certainly faithful in God's house, but only as a servant. His work was an illustration of truths God would reveal later. But Christ, the faithful son, was in charge of the entire household. And we are God's household if we keep up our courage and remain confident in our hope in Christ. That is why the Holy Spirit says, Today you must listen to his voice. Don't harden your hearts against him as Israel did when they rebelled. 
when they tested God's patience in the wilderness. In the wilderness. There your ancestors tried my patience, even though they saw my miracles for 40 years. So I was angry with them, and I said, their hearts always turn away from me. They refuse to do what I tell them. So in my anger, I made a vow. They will never enter my place of rest. Understand that. Be careful then, dear brothers and sisters. Make sure that your own hearts are not evil and unbelieving, turning you away from the living God. You must warn each other every day, as long as it is called today, so that none of you will be deceived by sin and hardened against God. For if we are faithful to the end, trusting God as, he fir as firmly as when we first believed, we will share in all that belongs to Christ. But never forget the warning. Today you must listen to his voice. Don't harden your hearts against him as Israel did when they rebelled. And who were those people who rebelled against God? Even though they heard his voice, weren't they the ones Moses led out of Egypt? And who made God angry for 40 years? Wasn't it the people who sinned, whose bodies fell in the wilderness? And to whom was God speaking when he vowed that he would never enter into his place of rest? He was speaking to those who disobeyed him. So we see that they were not allowed to enter his rest because of their unbelief. May God bless the reading of his word. You may be seated. Thank you, Brother Mike. Good afternoon, everyone. So good to see everyone here, even on a Saturday, amen. But I love our church, and uh, it's flexible. So it's going to snow Sunday. Super Bowl day, right? <laughs> well, that's more relaxation. And uh, so I appreciate you coming out today. God bless you for that. See some happy faces. I ask you to pray for those that are sick and different things that's going on. Ones that traveled as well. And we welcome those that's visiting with us today and those streaming as well. And God bless you. There's a church in Lynchburg, a Gethsemane Baptist Church. Uh, Dr. Uh, Reverend uh, Calter Ducks, pastor of it, a wonderful church, and they're meeting today too. Amen. So I'm inspired by them as well, and I thank you, for, Lord, for them. But to give a shout out to them, and uh, God bless you for being here today. And this morning we have uh, a youth class, those seven, six, seven on up. We're going to meet back in the coffee area room. We have a room in there, just pull up a chair, and I'll meet you back there with our other teachers. So. And the adults, you just send them back into the back with me. We'll have a class for you all today. Now I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Cash. Well, that was good. I'll get it later. <clears throat> all right. Let me ask you a question. Do you remember a time when you could not wait to go to the house of God and worship with other believers? Do you remember a time when you really felt connected with the Lord and your prayers were getting answered? Do you remember a time when the last thing on your mind was you and your problems? I'm going to make everybody bad at me before I'm finished doing this. <laughs> Remember when all you wanted to do was serve God and witness to others. Then somehow, all of that came to an abrupt end. And everything changed. Your your want-tos and your desires and your priorities all change. Now everything is different. I may be speaking to someone watching online right now or listening by radio or sitting in here. But I want you to think about that. Got some more questions to ask. How many of you simply can't get it right? No matter how hard you try, 
No matter what you do, and you feel like your efforts are always failing. I see countless reports of that online every day. I do not understand. I've given it my best shot. I've done this and I've done that, and nothing is working out for me. Your relationships last about as long as a snowball in July. And you keep trying a new one and a new one and on and on and on, yet it never works out. It's always something to throw a wrench into what's going on in your life as far as relationships are concerned. Maybe your efforts at bettering yourself and your situation, as noble as it seems, it fails over and over and you feel like a ship that is out there adrift in the sea. And you just never seem to be able to reach your destination. You can't beat your addictions or any of your shortcomings no matter what you do. I've, have I got you good and depressed yet? I ain't done yet. D.L. Moody said you can't get a man saved to get him lost. So I want people to be aware of their situations first before they can look for help. Maybe your spiritual life seems totally empty. You feel no connection with God. Your prayers don't appear to be heard and you feel a thousand miles away from him. Maybe you have little or no interest in worshiping or attending worship, nor do you care any longer about fellowshipping with God's people. The things of the Lord simply don't hold your interest anymore, and you wondered what happened, and you're just really miserable about all of that. As always, the Word of God holds all the answers to the problems of man. And this stage gets mighty hot up here. Matter of fact, the Bible doesn't hold some of the answers. It holds all of them. Don't let anybody tell you you've got to seek elsewhere to find the answers to the problems that mankind has. The one who created you wrote a book a manual to go by to learn how to operate yourself. Psalm chapter 1 is where I'm going to be looking this morning. And it's got just about everything covered. That hum is from a truck outside, apparently. It's not the microphones. I'm, not only am I old, I'm deaf as well. Here, the psalmist writes this word. Blessed. He says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Let's look at that word blessed or blessed, however you want to pronounce it. It means happy. And it's not really based on circumstances. A lot of our happiness that we look for it's strictly based on our circumstances, and it goes away just as quick as it comes. That's not the real thing that God gives. It's a happiness that only God can give you, and it's one that really lasts. You can be blessed in the most dire of situations. No matter what your circumstances are, you can be blessed in a heavenly way that no man can take away from you. And so to receive this blessing or to be blessed, there are three things that God says you must not do. The Bible is normally a book of do's and not don'ts. But when it starts mentioning some of the don'ts, we need to pay attention to it carefully. Number one, it says walk not in the council of the ungodly. And they've got a big council, by the way. A really big one. Now, a lot of the young people are going to frown at me while I'm telling this because you have no idea what I'm talking about when I explain this. 
but all the old folks in here will enjoy it. Do you remember the old days of shopping downtown? Anybody ever remember that? Most of downtown went away around 80-ish, maybe up to about 85, but I was shopping in the 60s, so it really don't matter. The vendors downtown, and I wish we could rewind, I loved shopping downtown. There was everything you could possibly want down there. I don't care what it was. No mall could compete with downtown. The vendors would put their most attractive products in the display case. Every store downtown had a big glass display case, and they put all the coolest stuff right there in there while you were walking down the street. Maybe some of y'all will be envious of this now. Where, and, and it was set in a way where you could not help but notice when you walked by. And I, I mean, they had the best that they had in that display case. They had furniture, they had clothes, they had appliances, and my favorite, they had guns. They still know how to do that to me. Guns are sporting goods, whatever you want to call it. And they knew what would catch your eye. Doesn't matter whether you were a man, woman, or child, or whatever, they, kid, they put toys in the case, especially for kids to worry their parents to death to go in there and look at it. Now, you don't need to say this out loud, but what can Satan use in his display case to catch your eye? I know there's a particular sporting goods store over in Lynchburg. They know me well. I've had an account with them for 43 years. I could have bought two or three houses with what I spent on guns. Might as well, I'm going to tell you, it's the truth. When I would walk in the door, they knew me well, and they would put stuff up on the counter where I'd have to see it, and they'd go, check this out, Dave, check this out. <laughs> now, I'm not saying that shopping is sin. It's just that Satan uses the same method of attraction to catch your eye as you're walking by him. He does. So what does he use in his display case to catch your eye? Think about that for a minute. What is in his display case that will get you to look? That will get you to falter? Is it the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, or the pride of life? Is it greed? Is it the desire of things you know you should not have? We know some things that we'd like to have, but we really should not have. That's why my parents would never let me watch the Three Stooges when I was growing up because they knew I'd try that. And I'd be asking for a pair of wire cutters and a sledgehammer. And there were things I asked my parents for that they said, no, you really should not have that. <clears throat> what about things that feed your addictions? You know you should not have that. The best thing you can do is to walk on by. All of you people over 60 are thinking about Isaac Hayes right now since I said that, aren't you? <laughs> walk, go across the street if you have to, but do not even look at it. Walk away. That's how you handle the devil's display when you're walking by. Now, the next part of that verse, it says nor standeth in the way of sinners. Now this is where the danger starts to get real. Walking by does very minimal harm. But then you're walking by that display case, and then you stop to do what we used to call window shopping. A lot of people don't even know what that is. Just what are you shopping for? I want you to understand in a spiritual sense, Satan knows 
what you're shopping for, and he puts it right in the front of that display case. How many times have we stopped downtown or at the mall or even online? Facebook is flooded with ads of something that you looked at before. If you ever go to eBay and look at something, they're going to flood Facebook with ads if you talk about it in the car with your spouse. About an hour later, there it is. It gave me a report the other day. I've got a phone that I use for the radio station and because I have a flip phone for my personal, but it told me everywhere I had been that week, I'm going to turn that blame thing off. <laughs> All Satan wants to do is to get you to stop for just a minute. That's all it takes. And start looking at what he has for you. Our commercials do that. And this is the day of the Super Bowl. They spend more money during the Super Bowl for commercials, like $500,000 on up for a 30-second ad. Man, if I could sell a 30-second ad on the radio station, we'd have our budget for 10 years. And I always like the way they paint a pretty picture. I remember years ago, and I, I don't know why I remember this. I preached on it so much. They used to have, it was one of the beer commercials, and I don't even know if they make the beer anymore, but it showed as soon as the guy pulled the tab on the top of that can, all of a sudden the Swedish bikini team came down the side of the cliff on ropes. A lot of what they're not telling you is that if you drink enough of that stuff, they all look like the Swedish bikini team. <laughs> I'll leave that alone. Once you stop, when you're coming down that street and you stop and look in that display case or you watch this or you look at that, the war is on. It is. He will throw everything he can at you. I remember it was some sci-fi thing where these two starships were fighting and the commander yelled, fire everything! That's what the devil does when he sees you stopping to look at what he's got. He wants to fire everything at you. I remember shopping downtown at certain stores and, and what I'm going to tell you is the truth. You may think this is crazy, but I can prove it. Once I would stop and start looking through the display case, and it happened to my dad and it happened to my mom as well, one of the salesmen from inside of the store, and they hung around near the door, by the way, once they saw that they would come out and ask me, what are the items that I'm looking at? And then they would grab my arm and pull me into the store. You do that now, I will draw a gun on you. <laughs> but back then, they were serious, man. These were salesmen. They lived off a of commission. They weren't paid by the hour, and they literally would grab you by the arm and lead you into the store. And they would hammer away at you and convince you how you needed this product so badly that it was the latest and it was the greatest thing and how you should not leave the store without it. Some of you remember them doing that. There were two stores in particular. I won't mention them because some of the owners are still alive. The devil is a serious salesman as well. The most serious salesman of all. Once you stop, once he's got your attention and you stop, he is going to grab you and he's going to pull you into his store every single time. And once he's got you in there, he will hammer away at you. He will weaken your resolve. He will break you down, and then he will justify everything he does. 
He will try to, try to make you feel good about sin. He'll say everybody's doing it. We used to hear that as teenagers. He will say it's the best thing that ever happened to you. And that you need to quit letting that old outdated Bible make you feel guilty. He'll tell you that. A lot of people say that now, proudly. So now you're in the store. Here's the third level. Sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Remember, blessed is the man that does not do this, that does not sit in the seat of the scornful. That's the last step. The one you will regret for the rest of your life. And yes, I'm sorry to say the salesman's got you hooked and he's got you seated at his desk and he's got you signing up for the easy payment plan. How many, let's just be honest, how many of y'all have fell sucker to the easy payment plan when you were younger? Now, if you do it now, you're just an old fool, okay? The easy payment plan, oh, that sounded so good. But that easy payment plan is one that will cost you many times more than it was worth. And the payments go on and on, but don't just sign here. And it's so easy, everybody does it this way. You can make those payments, nothing to it. Satan, the greatest salesman of all, is now done hammering away at you. You're hooked. You're convinced. And now comes time for the devil's easy payment plan. Only it ain't easy. It's horrible. And the payments never stop. There never comes a time once you agree to his easy payment plan that you're done with him. As a matter of fact, the payments get higher and higher as it goes. It costs way more than it's worth and you can't return it. In fact, it will wind up costing you everything. There are many people that has been there and they know it will not just cost you your money, but it will cost you your health. It will cost you your happiness, your spirituality, and eventually your life. And there you sit, signing the contract for the easy payment plan that Satan has for each and every one of us. Now you've lost your happiness and your blessings from the Lord. Well, let's look at what it says about the one who doesn't do those three things. It said, this person's delight, verse number two, is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. You want to get rid of the garbage in your brain? Fill it up with this right here. Take the book of Psalms and bow your head and start praying it before the Lord. If you can't think of anything else to say, pray all through the book of Psalms. Then pray through the book of Proverbs. Then pray through the book of John. And it will start cleansing your mind. And it said if you do these things, if you meditate on the Lord, it said you'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper if you want to prosper if you want for the things in your life to become real and to become true and your prayers to come to pass get into the word of God don't just read it live it and then when the storms come along you will not be moved you can't be uprooted how many people I have met in the 28 years that this church has been in existence, if everybody that came to me privately and said, I want to serve the Lord and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that, if they all were still doing it, we'd have to have four services on Sunday. We'd be lined around the walls. But many of them have fallen by the wayside because they fell for those three things. And they just, where are they? And now they're wondering why everything they do does not prosper. God will cause you to prosper. And I'm not talking about making big money and all. I'm not going to do like the health and wealth 
if, the, if, if serving the Lord brought you health and wealth, then I'm going to bust tail wide open when I die. Because it hasn't done a thing for me, but <laughs> physically, I've never had so many physical problems than when I decided to serve the Lord. I kid you not, y'all are killing me, you know that? <laughs> Calling me at 11 o'clock at night and tell me this and tell me that. One night I had to go up in somebody's house and take a hunting knife away from a guy's wife. I did. Y'all looking around to see who it is, ain't you? <laughs> y'all have no idea what this, how, how, this battery wears out every day of people calling me with the most awful stories you ever heard in your life. I'm only 35 years old. <laughs> Lord. But it's not a health and wealth thing. The prosper is spiritually. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. When I went to the Museum of American Frontier Culture up in Stanton, they were demonstrating how hard they had to work for a meal. They took a pile of wheat and they had this thing that looked like a rake and they were pounding it up and down and they'd throw it into the air and this stuff would blow away in the wind. It was called chaff. They said, that's worthless. And what hit the ground was the good wheat. And it said that people that don't want to follow God's precepts are like chaff. They blow away in the wind and there are many people that they had a church experience. They never really got saved and they said they were going to do this. They said they were going to do that, and the wind just carried them away. I pray that you don't wind up as chaff. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. If you spend your life serving the devil, you will perish. That's what it said. Your way will perish. Your plans will perish. Nothing will come to fruition. And the bad part about it, most all of us can admit to this, no matter what's going on in your life right now, the consequences of sin sometimes remains with us. Yeah, you may regret what you did. And the scars may be with you throughout your natural life. Maybe you've got the scars of sin, of the way you may have lived in the past. God always makes provision for the forgiveness of sin, but not always for the consequences. So there are things that we do, or we choose to do, that will stay with us. But there's some good news. God can take those scars that you have, those regrets that you have, and he can use them for his glory. If you let him do it, he'll do that every single time. He can use you to rescue other people that's getting ready to do that, and you, out of your experience, and out of your scars can go and say, I've been there, brother. I've been there, sister. Let me talk with you and I can help you. I can help you. Through you. And in turn, your life can be blessed again. There's nobody in here with no matter how horrific of a past you have had, that you can't wind up being blessed and happy again. I want you to know that. God is the God of the second chance. I told my mother that one time and she looked at me and she said, you better be glad that God's the God of the 10,000th chance. <laughs> and I am. I am. And may I say this, he is also the God of the last chance. I saw a TV show the other day, and there was a name of a church called The Last Chance Holiness Church. I said, man, I wish I'd have known that 28 years ago, because that had been the name of this church right here. <laughs> there are some of us in here, you feel like if this is it for you if you don't get it right this time. 
Well, I want you to understand that the blood of Jesus will cover that ink on the devil's contract every single time. But you got to get up out of the devil's seat. You got to get away from his desk. You got to stop looking through his window. You need to start walking toward the Lord and not toward the devil. Shall we bow for the invitation? I want you to know there is good news and there is hope no matter what you've been through. But do yourself a huge favor and don't let it happen to begin with. And if you have, I want you to know that there is no sin so bad that Jesus can't rip those chains apart and make it right for you. And so this morning, whatever your need may be, I'm going to give you an opportunity to come and be prayed for, no matter what it is. Maybe things are okay with you and the Lord, but you need to come pray for somebody else. And I always say, if you can't think of nobody else to pray for, pray for me. There's always somebody you can pray for. And so let, having said that, let's stand.